And hey, we're here at the scrap barrel to find some sheet metal. We're going to take this pile of scrap and turn it into this nice looking flower. Here's a little better view of it. And the great thing is we can do this whole project with basically three tools. Some pliers, air compound shears, and hold on just a minute, got to get to it. Spot welder. I'll even get a little fancy to show you how to add a stem to it, but we'll get to that later. We're going to start by making this little three layer version of the flower. And if you don't have a spot welder, don't worry, I'll cover alternate methods for that step at the end of the video. To start, you're going to cut your metal into squares. Each piece should be around an inch or so bigger or smaller than the last one you made. To make the flower look nice and uniform, we're going to mark some reference lines. This, you'll need a straight edge and something to mark your lines with. I'm using a steel rule and a scratch all, but you could do the same thing with a folded up piece of paper and a pencil if needed. Use a straight edge to mark two diagonal lines from corner to corner to find the center of your piece. And then mark a line through the center to mark the halfway point of each side. It should look something like this when you're done. Repeat for all your other pieces. Next, grab some circular object you have lying around, a roll of tape works great, and mark a radius line on each corner. Repeat for all your other pieces. Next up, we take our shears and we follow our curved line to round off all of our corners. After you're through with the bulk of your work, rounding off your corners with your shears, you may have to trim up some sharp points. Do that process to all your parts, moving on. From here, we can start the process of turning your pieces into flower petals. Use your shears to cut at least three quarters to two thirds of the way into your metal on one of your lines. Then skip a line and cut into your part again about the same distance. Repeat that process all the way around your part until you get this pinwheel looking piece. You can get two slightly different looks for your pinwheels depending on which lines you cut. If you cut the straight lines that mark the side of your metal in half, you'll get a sharper corner and less rounding on the top of your pet. Cutting on the diagonal lines that you marked from corner to corner will leave you with a much more curved top to make your petals form. Now you're going to take one of your pieces and use your shears to cut each pinwheel into four flower petals. Your goal here is to have the petals be one continuous rounded edge without any sharp corners. Don't worry if they don't end up being perfectly symmetrical. I would just make the flower look more natural later on. Plus, any mistakes you might make mostly get hidden when we start forming this into a flower in the next step. Repeat that process until each pinwheel looks like four flower petals. To take the individual parts and turn them into a flower, they have to be fastened together. But before we can do that, we need to flatten out our pinwheel. You can do this any way you like. We just place ours in a vise and clamp them down until they're mostly flat. You don't have to be perfect with this, but when you stack your parts together, you want your center to be flat and stable. To make our flower look a little bit more natural, you want to offset each layer of petals before you join them together. With the layers offset, all you have to do is hold them in place and spot weld them together. And remember, if you don't have access to a spot welder, I cover other ways to fasten these parts together at the end of the video. With your parts fastened together, it's time to form it into a flower. Grab your pliers, preferably needle nose, and a glove to keep your hand from getting cut up as you hold the metal. You're going to start with your smallest layer, stick your pliers underneath one of the petals as far as you can go, then bend up to 90 degrees. And clamp your pliers down on one side of your pedal that you just bent up and roll your wrist to bend a curve into that pedal. Now we move on to the other pedal. Get your pliers underneath the pedal next to the one you just added a curve to and bend up to 90 degrees or until it touches the one you were just working with. Turn the second pedal in a curve to match the first one you did. 
And then on the other side of that second pedal, add a curve as well. Repeat this bending process for the entire layer so that way each pedal tucks into the next one. When you get to the fourth pedal, you may need to do some bending on the initial first pedal you worked with to get those two parts to fit the right way. When you have all the pedals on that layer up and curved, you're finished and you can move on to repeat the same process on all your other layers. And last, we're gonna make our metal flower look a little bit more natural. If all you have is a set of needle nose pliers, those will work fine, but it does make it easier if you have a pair with a set of wider jaw. For this step, we're gonna start with our outer layer and clamp our pliers down on the top edge of one of our petals, no more than a quarter inch or so, and then just roll your wrist again to add a slight curve to the top of that petal. It looks something like this, and then you just complete that process across the entire top of your petal. Do that same process across all the petals for your outer two layers. And with that, flowers done. All right, if you don't have a spot welder, you can try joining your parts together with one of these methods. For each one of these alternate methods, you're gonna start off by drilling a hole in the center of each piece of your flower. First method we'll cover here is a real quick way using pop rivets. They look like this, and you'll need a pop rivet gun to make this work. The biggest issue with using pop rivets is the layers of your flower get a little loose and rattle a bit when you start bending them into the flower shape. Another method you could use is just steel rivets. Once you have your holes drilled, the only extra tool you would need here is a hammer, preferably a ball-peen hammer, and it's nice if you have a rivet setter, but it's not needed. If you don't even have a hammer, you could just use machine screws and nuts. After you drill your hole, you don't need any extra tools for this method. And now to get fancy, we're gonna add a stem to your flower. The best and easiest way I've found to do this is with a MIG welder and tacking the flower layers onto some type of metal rod. Here I'm using an 8 inch diameter TIG wire I just had lying around the shop. What you want to do here is place the smallest petal layer at the end of the rod and tack it into place really well. You do that to all your layers until you have something that looks like one of those spiral potato things you can get at a fair. And there you go. Simple sheet metal flowers you can make from scrap with pretty basic tools. If you like this sheet metal project and you're looking for your next one, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out when I cover how to make this tool trick. Thanks for watching.